Hey friends, Shashank this side. I hope you all are doing well today. Today we'll be discussing an important topic from VPC network section, which is your VPC endpoint. So we're gonna have a look what VPC endpoint as a service is all about, how to configure it, and what are the benefits of using VPC endpoint. So let's review few points regarding VPC endpoint, and we'll have a practical demo right away. So let's say if you have to access your S3 bucket from EC2 instance or if you want to upload on a specific side, if you want to upload a data to S3 bucket from EC2 instance, what is the mode of communication? It's always via internet. Okay. So they were like bit concerned among the people, why can't we have a dedicated channel between two services like EC2 and S3 created to upload data directly to S3 bucket when you have everything provisioned in the same region, let's say Northern Virginia. So that's where the concept of AWS VPC endpoint came into picture, where it enables you to create a private secure channel, private link between two services within same region. So we can have a VPC endpoint created that will help us to upload data from EC2 instance, which is private in nature, to upload data directly to S3 bucket instead of going via internet. So there were like few benefits came into picture with this as well. One of the most important, important is the security part where you don't have to upload a data via internet. The communication will not going to happen via internet. So that means we are secure within the same network, within Amazon network. Second most important uh, benefit was performance. So whenever you create a dedicated channel, private dedicated channel between two services, obviously the mode of communication is faster as compared to your internet communication because it acts like a fiber optics cable between two services. So let's review a few points regarding VPC and then we'll have a practical. So VPC endpoint enable you to privately connect your VPC to the supported AWS services. So initially with when they launch VPC endpoint, the supported service was like S3. Now we have a variety of services that is supported by VPC endpoint. It's powered by private link without requiring any internet gateway, NAT gateway, VPN connection, or a direct connection. So these are the things which is not required to have a VPC endpoint to communicate between two services. Instances in your VPC do not require to have a public IP address. As I said earlier, we can have our server in a private subnet and we can directly access our S3 bucket on a private channel and upload a data like DB backup or configuration file or log files because everything will not gonna leave the Amazon network. It's all within one box. Endpoints are virtual devices. They are horizontally scaled up, redundant and highly available component of a VPC that allows communication between two services within same VPC. So as of now, we have two endpoints provided by VPC endpoint is one is uh, interface and one is gateway. So interface is just like your elastic network interface with private IP address. And this is just like your entry point of a traffic destined to use the supported services. And the gateway is act like a gateway where you have to route everything from the route table as a target source. Okay, so you have to give your target in your route table so that the traffic destined to the supported services can go, can communicate. So I hope VPC endpoint concept wise is quite clear why to use it and what is the need why Amazon created VPC endpoint. So let's have a practical demo on uh, VPC endpoint. I have already done few setup, like I have created uh, my EC2 instances and VPC. So let's review this. So I'm into my AWS management console on VPC dashboard. So let's go to your VPC. I have already created a custom VPC. I'm not using default. So my seeder is 10.0.0.0 slash 16. I have created two subnets. One is private and one is public. So I'm, I have created public subnet because I'll be using this subnet to provision an instance where I'll be using that instance as a jump host to access my private server. Because as of now, I haven't created any directory services. I don't have any domain created, so I won't be able to RDP or SSH directly to the private box. So I have to go via jump box. 
So that's why I have created public subnet as well. And I'm using least uh, subnet range provided by AWS, which is slash 28. I'll be getting 11 IPs out of which I have already used one for both created and EC2 instances. Go to the route table. I have two route table, public and private. So private is connected to my internet gateway just to access my public server and private is just local to the VPC. Okay, and I have one internet gateway, which is custom, my internet gateway. So let's go to my EC2 instance. I have two instances, one is, one is public, one is private, and both server has been assigned to access an S3 bucket role. So you can see S3 EC2 access, and private is also S3 EC2 access. So I'm using Windows environment because um, most of the demo I have done with the Linux environment. So I thought let's give a try with Windows environment. Okay, so let's RDP to my public server, which is assigned with us Elastic IP 32249507. So I already have this. So for that, I have to create a password. So click connect, get password. For this, it should be Windows Mkey decrypt. This is my password, copy, close. So this is the RDP tool that I use for uh, Mac to log into my Windows environment. I'm using administrator as my user ID. Let's continue. So here we go. I'm able to log in. Same I'm going to do to create a password for uh, private server. Get password, decrypt it. Copy, close. As you can see, the private server has only private IP. No public IP has been assigned. And private server is in uh, US East 1B and this one is in US East 1A. Another thing on, uh, so RDP public, if you see the inbound rule for the public server, it's open from all over world. And the private server is open via my seeder, VPC seeder. So private is always secure. So let's go here and open a notepad just to paste the password for private server. Again, it's not copied, I guess. Decrypt it, copy, and this is the password. And let's copy our uh, private server IP. It's RDP to it is. Okay. okay. It's already RDP. I guess the password is already saved. That's fine. So let's see. Let's open a PowerShell. Run as admin. First of all, we're going to see if it's able to ping Google or not. <coughs> Sorry. So we are able to ping Google. Since S3 access rule is already assigned to this public server, so let's do S3 bucket. Get S3 bucket, hit enter. This will gonna show up all the buckets that I have in US East region. Let's go to our private and open another PowerShell in private. So as you can see, I'm in uh, 10.0.0.2.5. Run as admin, ping, google.com. So as you can see, it's not able to connect to Google. And here, if I do get S3, because this server is also assigned with S3 access role. So let's see what we get. As you can see, these are the buckets that I have in my Northern Virginia region, US East. So this will gonna take again some time. It's trying to access my S3 bucket. Let's see if it's able to access or get the list of S3 bucket or not. Okay, meanwhile, what we're gonna do 
let's minimize this. So to create an endpoint, we have to go to our VPC dashboard. On the left hand side, we have something called endpoints. Click on that and everything I am doing in Northern Virginia. So click create endpoint. So these are the three service categories that we have. One is AWS services, find service by name from marketplace. And these are the service supported by VPC endpoint. You can see Athena is there, cloud directory, cloud formation, cloud trail, code commit, code build, EC2. So earlier when they launched VPC endpoint, the supported service was S3. And if we go here, we can see we have one gateway as well for DynamoDB. I'm not going to select that because we are not doing something on DynamoDB. So let's search something for called S3. Should be, yep, this is the one. So this is my, then we, you have to select your VPC. This is my default one. So I'm gonna select the custom that I have created, which has, uh, two subnet, one is private, one is public. We're gonna select public. And here you can see like a rule with destination this and the target with this endpoint, this is the ID example, will be added to the route. So this will gonna create an entry to my private subnet. On the warning side, you can see when you use an endpoint, the source IP address from your instance in your affected subnets for accessing AWS service in the same region will be private IP address, not the public IP address. So we are doing everything as of now with private. So we should be good over here. Okay. Then in terms of the access policies, you can give full access or the custom one. So as of now, I'm going to have a full access to S3. So that should be fine. Okay. So let's create endpoint. Endpoint is created and should be available immediately. The endpoint type is S3. So S3 is another gateway endpoint. So go to the route, click on private subnet route. Okay, it should have created one entry here in the route table. You can see this is the one. PI 63A 5400A and this is my route. So if you try to edit this, you won't be able to edit the route. Okay. So let's go to route table. I'll show you the exact entry name. I was in the subnet section. So this is the destination and this is my target uh, VPC endpoint, which is active in nature. So we have created our VPC endpoint. Now we have to go to our private instance to check whether we will be able to see something on EC2 sorry, something on S3 bucket or not. So as you can see, uh, we are not getting anything from S3 bucket. So again, I'll gonna use ping google.com just to cross verify it's not connected to internet or not. It's google.com, I guess, right? Anyway, google.com. So it's still not able to ping Google. So, and so we are good, like we are not connected to internet. Now let's say get S3 bucket, enter. Here we go. We were not able to see the S3 bucket earlier. After creating endpoint in the private subnet, we will we are able to see the bucket list from my S3 console. We can try another command like get S3 object. And we have to enter bucket name. Let's say the famous one that I use for me, config test 2000 enter so these are the objects that I have in my bucket you can see cloud former template AWS CFI move this is my video that I used with my last video on CloudFront and test.txt so now we are able to see the S3 bucket even if you want to upload or download over a private link, you can do it using VPC endpoint. That's it guys for this particular video. So this is one of the important and useful uh, service provided by Amazon. Just try it out on your account. Give a try on your test environment. 
show them to the higher management that instead of going via internet, we can directly go with a private secure channel within same region of a network. So if you have any concern, please place out a comment in the comment section and I'll be there to help you right away. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.